Be my protector, O God, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Lead me, guide me, for the sake of your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A very warm welcome to the Holy Mass this morning. It's good to see you all here and wonderful to know that you're able to join us over the live stream this morning as well. It's good to have you with us. I'm offering the Mass this morning for the intentions of Gilbert and Anna Elks, Keith Bradley, and Stanley Gibbs. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, You came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, O Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If a swelling or scab or shiny spot appears on a man's skin, a case of leprosy of the skin is to be suspected. The man must be taken to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests who are his sons. The man is leprous, he is unclean. The priest must declare him unclean. He is suffering from leprosy of the head. A man infected with leprosy must wear his clothing torn and his hair disordered. 
he must shield his upper lip and cry, unclean, unclean. As long as the disease lasts, he must be unclean, and therefore he must live apart. He must live outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. Happy the man whose offence is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. O happy the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. But now I have acknowledged my sins, my guilt I do not hide. I said I will confess my offence to the Lord, and you, Lord, have forgiven the guilt of my sin. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Exalt you just. O come, ring out your joy. All you are bright of heart. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. Second reading. A reading from the Corinthians. Whatever you eat, Whatever you drink, whatever you do at all, do it for the glory of God. Never do anything offensive to anyone, to Jews or Greeks, or to the Church of God. Just as I try to be helpful to everyone at times, not anxious for my own advantage, but the advantage of everyone else, so that they may be saved. Take me for your model as I take Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and pleaded on his knees. If you want to, he said, you can cure me. Feeling sorry for him, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Of course I want to, he said, be cured. And the leprosy left him at once and he was cured. Jesus immediately sent him away and sternly ordered him, Mind you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest 
and make the offering for your healing prescribed by Moses as evidence of your recovery. The man went away, but then started talking about it freely and telling the story everywhere so that Jesus could no longer go openly into any town, but had to stay outside in places where nobody lived. Even so, people from all around would come to him. The Gospel of the Lord. For the homily today, we have a video message from our Bishop Richard. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the great season of Lent is approaching. Lent is a time of repentance, of renewal, and of healing. Perhaps, like me, you look forward to this time. These coming 40 days are a great gift to us, for Lent invites us to engage more deeply with the Gospel message as we prepare to celebrate the events of our salvation, the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The account of the healing of the leper that we hear in today's Gospel is a very good preparation for Lent. The leper had to overcome the stigma that went along with the disease. He had to find the courage that enabled him to step back into the company of others, conscious that the society of his day would not welcome him. Not only did Jesus welcome him, he touched him. This physical contact, of which he had been deprived perhaps for many years, brought healing of his sickness and the social and psychological burdens that went along with the disease. This was healing beyond measure. This account in the Gospel calls us to stand before the Lord just as we are, with our ills and failings. Like the sick man in the Gospel, we must place our trust totally in the person of Jesus Christ. The joy that this trust engenders in us is beyond our description, and, even in these difficult times, is a wonderful consolation. This coming Lent, therefore, let us stand before the Lord as we truly are. This will demand a little courage, but the Lord wishes to reach out to us, to touch us with his healing and forgiveness, that we may be truly at one with him. This Lent, we can all be assisted on this journey through a new initiative for our diocese, Invited. This is more than an event. It is a journey, a pilgrimage through the weeks of Lent. It is something in which every one of us can take part and it will call us to a renewed experience of Jesus' call to us. This last year has been a difficult one for us all as we live through the COVID-19 pandemic. Our lives have been touched in different ways, sickness and the deep sadness of bereavement, isolation and uncertainty, financial challenges, additional demands on our school communities, closure of churches and different demands for priests and deacons, the immense responsibilities that have come to healthcare professionals and others in the front line of care for the sick. Invited is therefore timely, for it is for every person. It can nourish us as individuals, as parish and deanery communities and as a diocese. Invited is a mission experience prepared and given by our diocesan formation team. Thanks go to them for all the preparation that is going on for the benefit of us all. Information has already been circulated to parishes. And further information will be available through newsletters, diocesan e-news and the website. Each Monday of Lent, there will be a gathering that can be accessed virtually. This will continue to be accessible afterwards. At the end of this gathering, some questions will be offered for reflection in preparation for a second meeting each Thursday, 
that will help us to prepare for the coming Sunday. In the coming years, we shall have opportunities for similar mission experiences with a focus on a different liturgical season each year. These will lead us to the 60th anniversary of the foundation of the diocese in 2025. Let us all be open to be invited afresh by the Lord this Lent. He invites us to be his each and every day of our lives. With the sick man in today's Gospel, let us rely on the gift of his mercy, that we may accept his love for us and grow ever closer to him who suffered and died for us. In this way, our celebration of Easter will be an experience of his new life, enabling us to proclaim his resurrection to the world. With every blessing, your Bishop, Richard. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of, the com- for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that all who believe in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. It's wonderful to see you all this morning. Uh, just a few notices. A big thank you, as always, to our stewards and to the uh, liturgy contributors, the musicians, the readers, and to the IT team as well. We couldn't do it without you. Um, the Children, Youth, and Families team have produced a children's liturgy video, which is available online. I do encourage you to check that out. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, we begin the holy season of Lent. It is Ash Wednesday this Wednesday, and there are lots of masses available in all four of the churches in the parish. Do please check out the times for those. Um, the, the 10 a.m. mass here over the live stream, um, we've invited the schools, our, our, our parish schools, to, uh, to, watch, um, to watch that mass. Normally, we'd be able to go into the schools and celebrate uh, an Ash Wednesday liturgy, but of course, it's half term this week, so we've invited them to, to tune in for that. Uh, but it is very much uh, open to everyone, so do please watch, watch out for that. As the bishop mentioned in his lovely homily, we have our diocesan mission starting uh, next week, invited, and you are invited. I would really encourage you to sign up for it if you haven't already. Um, it's a wonderful way of exploring the meaning of Lent, of hopefully uh, growing closer to Jesus uh, by entering into a personal relationship with him, and also it's a way of engaging with other people from across the diocese. Um, we are one parish in, uh, amongst many parishes in the diocese, and we're one diocesan family. And it would be wonderful to be able to meet and get to know some of the other people in this diocese, and to be able to share with them our own faith and enthusiasm. So do please consider taking part. A big thank you to the home groups in this parish. I know that you have contributed quite a number of facilitators towards the diocese, and the diocese is very grateful for that. Uh, the final hymn after Mass today has been put together again by the diocese as a kind of um, celebration of the diocesan mission, and the song that you hear um, has been especially composed by the One Hope, uh, One, One Hope uh, project for, for this diocese. So. Do, do stay tuned to watch that. Uh, the only other thing, I wish you all a very happy Valentine's Day. Um, do remember that before it became a, a, a very secular event, it was, was of course the commemoration of Saint Valentine, but of course, all you happy couples out there, I wish you a very joyful and blessed day and the rest of the week. Um, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. What is the kingdom of heaven like? What is life to the full? I roll it out before us, it's winding, but we trust in the journey that's open to all. So come to the Father, come one and all. You are invited to take up the call. His mercy can cover what's gone before. So come as you are. Come one and all We won't ever walk alone Love is a person we can know A God who shows us his face Invites us by grace In friendship with him we can grow so come to the Father, come one and all You are invited to take up the call His mercy can cover what's gone before 
So come as you Come one and all.